I've got something in this little black box that's guaranteed to make the PCMR e -peen just a little bit bigger. And before moving forward, because I know you guys are already staring at it, let's go ahead and talk about the fuzzy patch on my forehead. Well, I grew this lovely, lovely beard, and my forehead started to feel a little bit left out. So I decided that my forehead can go ahead and grow a beard too. But he has to promise to maintain the thing. I'm taking care of this one right here. So, yeah. Can we, can we move on now, please? Inside this little black box is something that I said I would actually not get unless Intel sponsored, and they were gracious enough to go ahead and sponsor it. I didn't think they would, but they did. Anyway, it is an Intel 6950X 10 core 20 thread processor. This is entirely overkill, especially for a gaming PC, but Skunkworks is not just a gaming PC, Skunkworks is a centerpiece to this entire channel. And let's face it, a lot of things I do around here are entirely unnecessary, and. This is one of them, but it's fun anyway, and I do it because I like it. And I guess it applies to both, so I digress. Currently installed in here right now is my 5960X, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. So this is effectively giving me four extra threads of performance, as long as you know an application can actually take advantage of 20 threads. So that's why today I'm, fo I'm not focusing on gaming at all. This is not a gaming chip by any means. You can game on it. In fact, it's single core performance is actually a little bit slower than something like a 6700K. So that would make this not the best choice for a gaming PC. But as I said, Skunkworks is not only the centerpiece of my channel, it is also how I make all of my, uh, all of my dollars, if you will, my dollars and pennies and stuff around this channel, and anything I can do that can make my process just a little bit faster, especially now that I'm encoding 4K videos for you guys to watch on this glorious FS5 camera, uh, anything I can do to make that a little bit faster would be great. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go ahead and run a t two tests real quick. We're gonna do Cinebench with this guy here, and it is overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz right now. We will be test testing overclock on this guy as well. But both of these are 3.0 gigahertz CPUs with 3.5 turbo clocks. I will be overclocking both of these and then doing my test because that's how I run them day to day. That's what I care about. But anyway, we're gonna run Cinebench on this, and then we're also going to encode my Dirtfish Rally video. Again, we're gonna time it, and then we're gonna install this guy, find its overclock, uh, we're gonna do Cinebench again, and then we're gonna re-encode that same video with all the same exact settings and then compare the differences. Transition.
All right, well, that was fun. Um, you guys got to kind of see what's involved with doing simple things like changing out a CPU when you have rigid tubing in your system. It's not exactly as easy as uh, you would kind of hope, but anyway, it's still fun and looks cool. But I have got the 6950X installed right now. It's running at 4.4 gigahertz, which it can go farther. I just did an effortless 4.4 gigahertz overclock on it. One that I know works with the uh, 5960X. So it kind of gives us a good apples to apples comparison anyway, between both of these tests when I compare them at the same frequency. Now I'm gonna be seeing how far the CPU can go when I have more time to spend with it. I would not have been able to get this video done in time for when I wanna upload it if I was screwing around with the overclocks trying to find its max stable, which sometimes can take days or even weeks as some of the CPU starts to settle in, if you will, for lack of a better term. But anyway, at least what you're gonna see here is apples to apples, 4.4 gigahertz, Broadwell E versus the older Haswell E. So on Cinebench, the 5960X scored a 1725, which is actually really good. That's a very good score. Uh, much higher than anything you're gonna get on mainstream. That's because Cinebench takes advantage of multi-threading heavily. And so it's going to optimize very well towards multi-threaded uh, CPUs that have tons of cores and logical threads over ones that have better per core performance. Uh, so when I installed the 6950X, I actually got a 2263. So we are talking over 500 points of uh, increase on it. That is huge, that's that's closer to 30%. Um, but what about with what I use every single day, which is being the Adobe Creative Suite, uh, Creative Cloud, Photoshop, and all that stuff. Well, we actually, while rendering that video I showed you with the rally school, the Dirtfish rally school, um, it was 16 minutes and 50 seconds from the moment I hit encode on a 35 megabit 4K video uh, on the 5960X. But when I installed the 6950X, this is no, I'm always gonna get those numbers. So if I say that wrong in this video, I apologize. But anyway, the 6950X at 4.4 gigahertz was only a difference of about a minute and 20 seconds at 15 minutes and 32 seconds from encode to complete and the file is fully rendered. So you might be asking yourself now, why did Adobe not do as well or show as much of an improvement as Cinebench did. Well, that's because Cinebench is highly optimized for multi-threaded CPUs, as I already said. Now, although Adobe is also optimized for using additional threads where available, it does not take full advantage of high thread CPUs, which is why in some tests, people have shown that the 6700K is actually better at Adobe than these high-end massive extreme CPUs. So there's a little bit of trade-off there. And the improvement that we actually saw, although again, the extra cores were being used, but not at uh, full utilization, not 100%. We did also see a little bit of an improvement in the architecture with Broadwell E versus Haswell E, which is where that difference really came from. Now I was hoping for more of an improvement. We might see more of an improvement as I bump up that core clock. Again, Adobe really likes clock frequency, and I think it takes a little bit of a prioritization to that than it does having a ton of threads available to it, in this case, 20 threads, but we'll play around more with that. But guys, this is why you hadn't seen the Skunkworks benchmarks video yet, because when I did that build, I reached out to Intel and asked if they're interested in sending me a CPU. And of course, uh, they were willing to do that. But there was a lot of events and stuff happening between now and then. It took time to get it. I've got it. It's installed. Now we can start benchmarking games and stuff. And I also have to consider whether or not I'm going to go to Windows 10 on this machine to take advantage of DX12 or do all my tests on DX11, because again, I'm still on 8.1 Pro over here. I'm happy with it. It ain't broken. I don't really want to fix it. But then again, I could have said the same thing about Skunk Works and I upgraded that anyway. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you found something interesting with this. I don't want to get something new like this and install it and not share it with you guys. So that's really the whole point of this video. But moving forward, we're going to see some pretty badass content coming up. I know it's kind of been lackluster lately and I apologize for that. I'm going to do the best I can to make things exciting for you to watch again. So stick around, stick with me and tell me what you want to see and do the best I can to get that all in there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.